Clostridials were one of the first vaccines made in animal health. Well, 1897, Mr. Cutter in Fresno, California had a drugstore out there and he launched his first blackleg product and an anthrax product. They were very reactive products, but they worked. Over the decades, different vaccines were created to protect against clostridial disease. However, in the 1980s, the cattle industry had a serious meat quality concern. At the time, all clostridial vaccines were similar and caused injection site lesions and poor meat quality. I was the bio product manager for Bayer. And that was when uh, NCA called us and said, you guys are causing us problems. The National Cattlemen's Association, now NCBA, had brought all the animal health companies together in Denver to discuss the vaccine-caused meat quality issue. The room was filled with research, production, marketing, and tech service veterinarians. And they showed us slides and, and uh, you know, what, what it was causing and they had narrowed it down to basically clostridial vaccines that were adjuvanted. And they poked us all in the chest, and rightfully so. And I met with our researchers and our production people and they said, well, we got an IM label. We could just put the sub-Q label back on it. That solves the problem, gets it out of the muscle. And I thought, isn't it still reactive? Well, let's go one more step. Let's clean this puppy up and make it the best black leg vaccine on the market. I went back over to the, to the production unit in about a month and they said, well, Rick, we got this solved. We got the dose down to 3 ml. And I was thinking, no, I'm a, I'm a farm boy. So I'm thinking, okay, let's see, 3 ml. I don't know that there's a dial a dose syringe that sets it at 3 ml. How about getting it down to 2 ml? When you get it down to that, call me. We'll get this product down from 5 ml dose to 2 ml is not an easy step. Because in the old blackleg products, these are Bactrin toxoids. So what's a toxoid? It's a contaminant. They reduce the endotoxins produced from the, from the toxoid portion of the dose. The first time in 75 years there had been any kind of a, of a research or a development or an improvement in clostridial vaccines, ever. And they did it in probably about two months. So we named it Vision. Not long after, Bayer had a new clostridial vaccine line with the family name Vision. It was the first two milliliter sub-Q vaccine on the market. My biggest competitor for selling Vision turned out to be my own sales force. Why? Because they're gonna sell my 55 cent a dose product into an eight cent market. So our veterinarians, including Dr. Armstrong, got their heads all together and decided, well, why is vision better? Is it more efficacious? Is it less reactive? The veterinarians consulted with a third party, Dr. John Ellis, who did a field trial comparing vision to the previous product. It proved that the vision vaccinated calves in the spring weighed 14 pounds more in the fall. You take this 14 pounds times 100, 200, 1,000 head of calves born that year, it's a lot of weight. And that's what the beef business is about, is selling beef. And so I took that data back to our sales force, and now all of a sudden we had a winner. Today, Merck Animal Health offers more than half a dozen Bovillus Vision vaccines, including combinations that protect against pink eye and H. somnus. We continue to study the effects of this vaccine on milk production and also the rate of gain in cattle. When compared to the conventional clostridial vaccines that are on the market today, Ovilus Vision offers better feed conversion and higher weaning weights. Vision is just one example of Merck Animal Health's commitment to vaccine research and development. Immunology is really important because for us to understand immunology, it helps us to better uh, address the evolving challenges that we have in the industry. Merck Animal Health has a history of finding a better way forward. Today, we offer one of the most complete vaccine portfolios, and we're committed to continuing to find new discoveries that will successfully advance cattle health.